Welcome to the Next Cloud Podcast. Let's talk about digital sovereignty. Welcome to another episode of the Next Cloud Podcast. Today, we'll be delving into the fascinating world of app design and exploring how the design team collaborates with the community to create amazing apps. To help us navigate this topic, I am joined by Nimisha Vijay, one of our talented designers at Nextcloud. We also want to take a moment to thank our listeners for the positive feedback about the podcast's return. Please continue to share your thoughts with us on social media or by emailing podcast at nextcloud.com. Now let's get started. Here's my conversation with Nimisha Vijay. Nimisha, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's really nice to be here. <laughs> Would you mind introducing yourself for the podcast listeners? Yes. Hello. So I'm Nimisha. I work as a part of the uh, design team at Nextcloud. And uh, I've been working here for, I don't know, a while. Like, I think um, I started off as a contributor, actually, for uh, six months um, at the at the ending of 2020, I think. I don't know. I'm going to. I'm going to fact check this later on, but around that time. And um, so I like got involved in Nextcloud through the diversity and inclusion program called Nextcloud Include. And, you know, I sent out a little email saying, hey, I really want to help out at Nextcloud. Can, you know, can I do that? And Jan, who is the other designer, replied saying, yeah, sure. And um, so for six months, I was contributing and then I joined the company full time. And it's been, it's been fun. It's been a good time. <laughs> Some people might have already seen your lightning talk that you gave at Nextcloud Conference last year. We're going to get a bit deeper into this kind of topic, uh, all about how the design team works and how the collaboration process with the community works. And I'm also very interested on, on like what your work, work week looks like. So can you maybe start out by explaining a bit what the design team at Nextcloud actually does? I mean, wait, so how much time do we have? So We'll see. I will cut you off if it comes to it, but feel free. <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, so, I mean, the design team at Nextcloud, it's not just uh, two people. It's a bunch of, you know, even developers are involved in design a lot of times. Uh, you know, anyone who gives just feedback on how it looks for I guess it's is also involved in design. So, you know, um, but formally, the design team just tries to make sure that um Nextcloud, whatever you're using, is usable, so you can do the things that you want to do with it, and you know it looks great. So you know you're not, you're not. It's, it doesn't look repulsing when you open it for the first time, and uh, you know it's just have a good time, uh, you know, using it basically. <laughs> can you elaborate a bit on what the work at the design team entails? Like, what's your like your structure, and how do you work with the community, and what, what's the process? Well, I mean, it's it is it's pretty flexible and I don't know, sort of open ended, I guess, because it's not the community is involved as well. So, you know, uh, it's not siloed into just the company and just two people, you know, making all the decisions. So at least we try to make sure that it's uh, open and transparent as well. So um, we there, you know, we do a bunch of things as part of the design team you know uh, some of the listeners might know the weekly design review call which happens every uh, tuesday so at uh, you know 2 p.m uh, central european time if you want to join in please do <laughs> it's always fun but um yeah so we do we do stuff like that where we give feedback to developers um, you know, we also work a lot with the developers in specking out what a feature could look like. So, you know, something that could be, you know, kind of complicated can uh, we try to make sure it's 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 visualized in a nice way. And someone who doesn't know what Nextcloud is going to look like can also use it. Um, so we do stuff like that. You know, we also do some um, competitor analysis, you know, so comparing uh, Nextcloud against what's out, already out there in the market. So we know uh, some of the feature gaps that exist, uh, stuff like that. And, you know, just generally tweaking the UI, I think. So using just some best practices, using um, some best practices of UX design and UI design and uh, trying to make sure that everything works smoothly. So a lot of that goes on in GitHub as well, uh, out in the open. A lot of community members give a lot of feedback. You know, if, so, if a developer says, you know, hey, this is a feature that I want to uh, implement or something, there are community members who um, who can just hop on and say, hey, maybe it can look like this and give a mock-up. Or, you know, they can just describe uh, how it could work. Or, you know, they can describe a use case, which um, would sort of go into 
what the final product could look like or you know they could just point out a bug which is also a design contribution so uh you know a b- bunch of stuff happens and uh hopefully i think we all i like to think that we all work together in making this happen so uh yeah nice fun stuff fun stuff <laughs> nice Can you go into a bit more detail about how these design calls go that you have like that that are also happening with community members? What's like the usual thing that's being discussed there since you've described that that is uh, not only for experienced designers, but also for people who are just starting out or who have questions? How does the call like that usually go? Yeah, so I mean, every Tuesday, there is like an open slot for a design review call. So uh, a lot of times, uh, developers who maybe have an app or something or a feature that they would like to get some design feedback on can just hop on to the design uh, channel on the Nextcloud instance that we use and say, hey, I have this feature or app and I'd like some design feedback on it. Can we have a call? And everyone's like, cool. And then we get on the call and we basically just do a review so the uh, developer maybe shares their screen and we say you know this looks great but maybe the alignment is off a little bit over here or you know the flow of this particular thing uh, you know is not super clear to us so uh, you know you can work a little bit on that so that's usually how it goes it can a lot of community members just hop in and listen as well if if you're interested in doing that that could work I think it's a pretty cool way of um, understanding uh, you know how uh, we work as a design team and how Nextcloud works as well. So fun fact, that's actually how I started getting involved. I just hop on in the design review calls and I just like sit there and say something and hope that I was right. But uh, um, it's, it's it's super chill. You know, you don't have to worry about being right. All feedback is good feedback. So that's usually how the design review call goes. It doesn't have to be a, a, a developer who proposes this. If anyone wants to start a design discussion, that they can also do that. So it's just uh, one slot where anyone who wants design feedback or a discussion to be started can hop in. Awesome. That's also good, like to to get like pointers on where things are going at the moment and where they might want to, if they have already existing apps, might want to work on a redesign or whatever to to make it more like in line with with our main design. Um, that kind of brings us to the next topic that you've had uh, or that got a bunch of attention at, at uh, the Hub Free event that we presented at Nextcloud conference. Um, that was the Nextcloud personal design. Can you give like a recap of what all that was about? Yeah, I mean, so for the previous release, we really wanted to make Nextcloud a little bit more fun and like nice to use, I guess. Um, you know, we like we were thinking about how we could make it a little bit more well personal, like that, that's the best way to put it. So, um, you know, uh, previous, previously, uh, the interface was still really nice, um, but the main thing that you could sort of tweak and change or play around with was the dashboard background. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you're if you on older versions of Nextcloud and you open your dashboard, there would be one big, nice image. And uh, that was sort of the extent of personalization that you could do. And with this new release, we really wanted to... Uh, get a little bit more personalization and, you know, allow people to play around with what their next cloud instance looks like. So, you know, we decided to keep that background for all of Nextcloud, basically, not just limited to the dashboard. So um, if you have used Nextcloud in the latest um, version, you would see that the you know background shines through for um, all the apps that you're using. Um, plus, we wanted to make it a little bit more fun and playful. So there are some you know, rounded corners, you know, softer colors and stuff like that. So um, uh, and, you know, I think it looks great. I'm obviously not biased from the design team, but uh, um, I think it looks uh, great. And, you know, my personal thing has like super nice green um, background with like nice green theming as well. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's off to myself, I guess. Like, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I tend to agree, but also I'm obviously biased as well. Um, <laughs> can you touch on, uh, apart from the um, visual improvements, a bit on the accessibility improvements that have gone in there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there have been, like, the accessibility can, I mean, the, the menu for accessibility is now easily accessible from the top right-hand menu, while otherwise you would have to go into the settings and go into another menu and then find it. So anyone who wants to, um, you know, use like a, I don't know, like a screen reader or something like that can get to where they need to be a lot easier. Plus, 
Uh, there have been general accessibility improvements where your experience with using a screen reader or a keyboard navigation have been vastly improved because we really try to focus on it uh, intentionally for the for the most recent release. So, um, you know, that's just generally, you know, keyboard navigations improved vastly, you know, screen reader experience have also been improved. So, um, yeah, like general overhaul for how you would, uh, how, how Nextcloud is presented to users of all kinds. I've heard good things about this for, uh, from people who rely on these accessibility features to, to use Nextcloud. And I think it's really, really great that, that we focused on our last release uh, on that and that Nextcloud personal now comes with like easier ways to use it, like with, with keyboard input and, and screen readers and all those good things. I will actually link to the Nextcloud Hub free launch um, that we did at conference um, where you talked more about the UI and accessibility features. So if anyone wants to listen to that or watch it again, um, link will be in the show notes. Then I have another question that is uh, that's kind of circling back to the uh, weekly design review calls. Um, how do you deal with with the feedback or suggestions that come in there? Because obviously, next lot in itself, we we get lots of um, suggestions on how to implement things or how to make things work for for certain people, and um, we kind of have to find a way to make it work for everyone or for it to be like a feature to be as obvious to use for everyone instead of trying to solve a specific issue for one person. So I, I'm I'm sure you get like specific requests that might not benefit everyone. So what's the selection process there? How does that look like? So I think one thing that we sort of keep in mind is that a lot of people who, you know, are active contributors to Nextcloud and who are involved in the community are developers. And, you know, we want to make sure that Nextcloud is, is usable for people who aren't developers as well. So, you know, people like my mom should still be able to use Nextcloud, uh, even if she doesn't know, you know, how to make a pull request or something like that. So, uh, you know, we... The, we generally try to follow like just best practices that come to UI a lot of times. So, um, you know, things like alignment and color of the button and stuff like that, there are general rules. But um, for the question that you asked specifically, like uh, suggestions or feedback that, you know, uh, aren't in line with what we think um Nextcloud could look like. We do consider it, of course. We try to think of as, you know, many solutions and try to consider use cases for all of them. And we try to make sure that most number of people are able to use Nextcloud. So if someone who doesn't have any knowledge of Nextcloud is still able to, you know, um, use whatever feature the that we got feedback on, like with your feedback, um, then obviously, like go ahead. It's 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 great feedback. But we also try to keep an eye out for, um, you know like features or suggestions where it's a little bit more technical knowledge and uh, like the design team isn't super technical. So that helps in a lot of cases where we're like, we don't know what's going on over here. So maybe some users don't as well. So we try to rely on our own lack of technical knowledge in order to make sure that, uh, you know, Nextcloud is usable for, you know, uh, a lot of people as well. Does that sometimes lead to like frustration from community contributors who are like, I, I made this very thorough plan on how to improve this one thing that in the end might only benefit me or that specific person? Um, and you kind of touched on that you're already trying to, um, if that happens, to combine that with ongoing efforts. But um, does that happen sometimes? Or is there like in, in, in the design world that also I don't know anything about? I'm also not, not too technical around Nextcloud. But um, yeah, what's the is is there an understanding in the design world about um, how to make this like kind of rejected idea work uh, in the next revision of it, or is that where f things fall down? Well, I mean, it 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 really it really depends. I mean, a lot of people suggest, can we make this a setting, and um, you know, so it's like, and a lot of times that 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 can be um, an option, like. I think uh, to give an example off the top of my head, I think there was an issue in DEC, which is the Nextcloud app for uh, Kanban board, basically. So there was an issue over there, which was very specific, kind of a power user sort of thing. And, you know, someone who's just using it casually may not use it. And in that instance, making it a setting that was, you know, off by default or something was really the best um, sort of solution there. But a lot of times what... Um, you know, people who request features maybe sort of don't understand is that the developers who implement this feature as maybe a setting is that they'll have to t test for twice the number of cases now with the setting off and with the setting on. So that it's not it's not 
a design problem as like it's not just a design problem it is like a developer uh, problem as well if you know every single feature is incorporated into nextcloud so we we do end up having to say you know like that's not the direction that we're going in or you know this is too specific for someone who maybe doesn't have the technical knowledge and you know like there are times where we have to say that but uh, i do think that that's necessary and you know we do consider it obviously it's not rejection right off the bat but even after consideration if it's something that we think is going to impact the experience of using nextcloud we will have to say that you know uh you know we can think about it later on sometimes or you know just be like sorry this is this is this is something that we're not thinking of right now you kind of touched on the topic of like setting and selecting smart defaults already mm -hmm. that's that's kind of where like ui touches ux Are you also involved in like UX decisions, like on, uh, since you've already said we might not want to enable the specific power user settings, but that's not necessarily a reason to reject it outright. We might still want it in there, but maybe not hidden away, but selectable as an option. Are you also involved in those kinds of decisions? Yeah, I mean, it is a collective decision. There is no decision that, you know, um, I alone can take as part of the design team. The developer team has to make sure it's in scope. And, you know, so, and a UX goes into a lot of this as well. So, um, you know, a lot of times when I think of how something could look like on a very high level, the result, the resulting mockup or the prototype is is very is, is very complex. And we obviously have to scale it back down to what's in scope for developers and what's actually uh, possible as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, like the, the process of UX is, you know, sort of ingrained in all of this. So even when you suggest a UI uh, improvement or suggestion, Session, if it's not in scope and you have to think of a way around it, you're kind of impacting the UX also. So, um, yeah, I would say uh, yes, in short. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Then you've also made a note in the doc about resources we use and recommend. Can you maybe explain a bit about that? Well, I mean, there there are, if you go to the Nextcloud website, there is a little page for design. Um, and over there, we go through a bunch of little resources, which I think are really useful for anyone who is looking to get involved in design or even a developer who is creating something that's user facing. So, um, you know, there are some things like, for example, the, 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 The thing I mentioned about uh, we can't make everything a setting. There's an entire very well written blog post about that. Um, you know, I can I can share it to you and you can share it in the uh, show notes later on. But uh, it's a very good blog post about why everything shouldn't be a setting. So and that's something that I keep coming back to. And that my the other designer in the team, Jan, also introduced to me, and I've been a fan of it ever since. So uh, that's one thing that we really like and. Uh, there are also some accessibility uh, resources like access, like a11y.com. So that's a11y, like accessibility.com. So that's a really well-designed, really useful um, uh, resource that we use for making sure that uh, things are accessible. There's also laws of UX, which are generally um, just some basic principles with which we can make some UI or UX decisions. So any developer actually who doesn't have a UX background or a design background can check out laws of UX. And, um, you know, there, there it's a very interesting and very like well-designed website also just going through some uh, like basic principles like the law of proximity, the law of common region and stuff like that. So it's a very interesting read for if you're interested in like design in general as well so you know um and i think uh nielsen norman group is like has always been one of the biggest uh you know sort of best practice uh you know very very well known resources so um for anyone who has any questions in uh designing something or something like that i would really recommend you go through some of the resources on the website and you know try to try to see what you can come up with before uh sort of you know asking right off the bat hey can i ask for for some help it would it's always nice to see co contributors and community members come up with designs of their own and then we work together to come to uh you know a final design i think that's always a great process awesome that kind of leads us actually uh quite on schedule to the next point which is contributing to design um can you describe like the ways on how that process actually works i mean we already touched on the design review calls but 
What are the steps like outside of that? Most of our discussions happen on GitHub using the issues. Uh, some of them happen on the forum as well. So uh, any place where you can present your ideas, uh, go ahead. That's what we use to communicate, basically. So if you have any design suggestion or improvements or something, you can just open an issue about it on GitHub and, you know, we will, you know, everyone involved. So the entire community can check it out and uh, see what they think of it. There's going to be some feedback. There's going to be some activity. Some people might be like, oh, I don't think this is the best idea because, you know, so and so. And, you know, you can be like, oh, I actually think it could be helpful in this situation. And then there's some, you know, discussion and that's always interesting. So, um, you know, GitHub is almost always the best uh, place where you can present your design uh, ideas and stuff. So, um, uh, you know, GitHub for sure. If also the design review calls, like you um, mentioned, it happens every uh, Tuesday. So if you have a free slot, then you can hop on there and you can also present uh, your app, like something that you've developed for uh, getting feedback or you can sit in on those calls and give feedback as well so that's another really good way you can get uh, in um, in design as well so um, yeah and like it doesn't stop with just giving suggestions you can also make a pull request for fixing something that you think is broken so if there's a very small for example alignment issue with the buttons if you know the text overflows from a button for example and you know how to fix that you go ahead you can make a pull request about it and you know that that's great that's like you've finished like you've gone like 15 steps ahead and just fixed it already so i think that's that's always cool to see so um yeah i mean you can uh whatever you have you can present it on on github and uh you know you can you can get a conversation started you already touched on like uh, as you said skipping all of the steps ahead and actually submitting like the solution but um and that's obviously also some overlap with, with not design related but uh, code contributions aren't there like a few steps before that before you actually decide on on trying to to fix it yourself or to actually see if some, maybe people are already working on that what, what's going on there yeah, that's actually a good point. I mean, um, it is like for for small paper cuts. Obviously, it's it's great to see people, you know, fix it and all of that. But for maybe a bigger issue or something like that, or if you, um, or honestly, even before you make a PR, I think it's a good idea to always just uh check whether uh the issue that you're facing has already been discussed about in the past so you can go to whatever repository you're um you know you're working for for example if you think there's an issue in mail you can go to the next cloud mail github repository go to the issues and see the closed issues and you know type in whatever you think is the a problem or suggestion and go through the closed issues and see if there's already been a discussion about, uh, you know, the thing that you want to talk about. Because a lot of times, um, you know, someone opens up an issue and it's already been discussed and there was a conclusion reached, you know, a few months ago or a few years ago. And, you know, it's great to revisit it, of course, but many times there, there has been like a well thought out rationale for why you know your feature maybe has not been implemented or something like that and you so i think that saves a lot of time and it's like encouraging for new contributors to uh, like go through that and familiarize themselves with uh, what's already been talked about and some of the design decisions that have already taken place before you open up an issue so that you're not demotivated when someone says oh we already talked about this and we don't want it so you know bye so i think it always helps to you know uh, go back to previous existing issues and um, check it out and you know what you mentioned about some steps in the middle there are a bunch of things you could do uh, while you're like opening an issue and it doesn't have to be a feature request or something like that it can also be you can also like report like UI bugs for example like for example if the you know that 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 button alignment is off or the text overflows, you could just uh, report that. That would be a UI bug and you can open that as an issue and that would work. But some other things that you could do are also, you know, we could do like uh, gap analyses, like I mentioned, you know, you can compare um, Nextcloud with existing products and check out what features um, are common to Nextcloud and what features Nextcloud is lacking and what features these other competitors are lacking to see, you know, sort of where Nextcloud stands in the market. I think we did like a round of that recently and it got a bunch of discussion happening in the comments saying, you know, 
hey like uh for example you know uh round cube has this feature or you know like thunderbird has this feature and some people are like oh nextcloud has this really cool feature why isn't that on the list and we're like yeah that's right we should include this as a cool feature while we're comparing so uh, that's a really cool thing that you could do for um you know any any application that you want and it's generally a good idea to check um if your feature is present in other competitors as well to you know sort of make sure that it's um and something that people actually want and you know the sort of goes back to what you were saying before about uh you know how do you know if a feature is something too specific or something that we don't want checking if other people want it is actually a pretty good measure of uh, how well received it's going to be if it's implemented so you know that's something you know you could do you could also do um you know some usability testing and i think as a designer this is very very interesting where you take whatever feature you have or app or whatever and sit down with someone who maybe isn't as good with who hasn't used nextcloud or isn't good with technical stuff as you are and then you go hey you can complete this task for example you can be like you could show them um i don't know you can show them files and be like hey uh, can you create a file and then share it with um your mom's email address or something and you know they would go through it and they would click and they would be like oh i don't know how to uh you know what's this sidebar thing i don't understand uh this link blah blah and that's very interesting to see cuz you get to see where people uh you know things that you're used to things that you sort of take for granted in the ui are actually super confusing for some people or some things that you thought were a major major issue end up being not an issue at all so um that's something that you could uh do and post the results for There's been a couple of usability tests for forms i think there's also been one for uh tasks if i'm not wrong so um very very uh interesting things for me as a designer at least so that's also something that you could do and obviously you know um if you don't want to make a pull request and fix the issue i think making a mock up of whatever feature you want and posting that so some visual specs are really helpful for developers in implementing the final product so if you want to if you're opening a feature request or an issue or something you could also you know it can be as simple as just drawing it on a piece of paper and taking a photo of it and uploading it or you can go like super fancy and you know use like you know like mock up tools or prototyping or use like a low fidelity like a html and css to create something that looks super high fi and all of that so uh, all of those would be really appreciated by the people who are actually implementing it so um those are all the things that you could do before like you know making a pr if that's not what you want <laughs> awesome Yeah, to recap that a bit. Obviously, it's very important to have like a look around because in in the world of open source and technology in general, you're usually not the first one with an idea. There usually have been people before you who had similar suggestions or even something that even or touches the same product or setting or whatever area we're talking about. Even reading those conversations on GitHub, I do this actually regularly before um, contributing. Like like I actually did a mock mock up about something last week that I uh, opened an issue on GitHub for. But uh, before that, I went through like a bunch of related issues and had a look at the discussions to to make sure that I understood what I'm asking here for and what might the implications are because it would be touching multiple uh, apps or, or parts of our product. Yeah, there's usually a reason why we do stuff the way we do it. And then if your pull request or your feature request is way more likely to succeed if you already kind of have to look around and know what the discussion around that was instead of like going over all of that again and reiterating the stuff that has happened before. Yeah, that, keeping right on with the schedule. Um, there are many other uh, ways to contribute if uh, to Nextcloud if you might not be interested in doing design work or maybe not in like user user interface or user experience uh, regards. Um, what are the other ways how you can contribute to Nextcloud? There are a lot of different ways, but I think the most sort of prominent one, like when it comes to an open source product, is. just programming so you know like that's and i think that's where most of the contributors um are like and that's where we get most of the contributors from also so you know programming and coding and you know actually fixing bugs and all of that that's you know i think that's a very a uh, classic way of contributing to an open source product i think um but you could also do like you know testing and bug reporting uh you know if something doesn't work right you can report that and that's actually really helpful because you know it can slip through the cracks when you know we're doing testing or if other people are using it so it can be really specific thing and you know that's also something that you can do 
And even if, if a feature is working, but you might expect it to do something differently or to, to I don't know, show up in the UI in a different way, this this is also useful to know. This this touches more on the like user experience part of things again. But um, yeah, if, if, if you would expect a feature to not only one simple thing or, or one thing in itself, but also a bunch of other things, then we should know about because then we might have, have not considered that specific workflow or use case. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think you did ask for non like UX specific uh, uh contributions. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, like bug reporting ends up being inherently maybe somehow. But if you have the technical knowledge and you see that, you know, something doesn't work, wouldn't work right in the code itself, you can you could you could like bring that up and, you know, uh, worst case, it's going to be, you know, someone saying, oh, it's actually we intended it to be this way. So, um, you know, there's if you have the technical knowledge, I think going through the code is something that's 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 always going to be uh, really well appreciated. So, um, yeah, that that's that's a very good point you brought up non US specific, but bug, bug reporting, unfortunately, ends up being a lot of UX. So, uh, gosh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other than that, there's also uh, translations because um, Nextcloud can be used. It's not just in English or German. There's also, you know, a bunch of other languages that you could um, use Nextcloud in. But it's very important that uh, we the the strings that are I mean the words that are translated from English to these other languages are, are actually translated accurately. So uh, if you have if you find that you use Nextcloud in French, for example, and some of these words don't make any sense to you, and you know what it's supposed to be, that's a really good way of contributing, which doesn't involve super technical knowledge or something like that. Saying, "Hey, this join call button is actually translated to you know like start call, and that doesn't make any sense. It's very confusing." So translations are a very very important part of contributing, and you know if you want to get involved, there's a really good way of getting involved as well. Also, there are like two ways to to go around with like improving the translations. The, the first part that we also sometimes see is like people opening issues on GitHub saying like, hey, I would expect this this word or the sentence to be something else. And this is kind of like a low hanging fruit or like a paper cut bug um, that you can, if you see it also like take on and uh, then go over to our translation platform, which is Transifex that we're using for this. And uh, there you can like actually uh, find that string or in that app and, and actually can go ahead and tr- change the wording there already and then that would be reviewed and there's like a process and how that would then flow back into the product all of these resources you will also find on nextlot.com slash contribute and that's that's a good way to start there but also if you're just starting out and looking for stuff to do or maybe being interested or seeing like an issue on github flying by this is then also stuff that you can easily take on yeah for sure and I, I completely missed that transfex part. Actually, thank you for uh, bringing that up. So uh, we we do use transfex for translation. So if you already want to fix something in like the last step, because you know if you're a native speaker or if you have really good knowledge of that language, you can totally just go ahead and literally fix it by yourself. So um, that will always be you know super appreciated. Um, yep. Other than uh, other than what I mentioned already, there's also documentation. I think. Uh, very important to document um, uh, open source projects, especially because it's ma- maintained by the community and stuff like that. So anyone who wants to set it up or uh, you know contribute to it or use it needs to know how to do it. Or if they don't, then they need to know they they need to be able to know where to go to learn more about that. So the documentation is very important. I think a lot of people start off off with documentation no matter what project they're starting off working with for like the developer documentation is super popular and uh, with nextcloud and i'm sure a lot of people who are who are contributing start off with the developer documentation so uh, if you find any um, discrepancies or uh, anything that you want updated in the documentation maybe maybe it's outdated and you know i like uh, recently, I think a year ago or something, I noticed that the design documentation was completely out of date. So I try to uh, update it with the design principles and stuff that we use right now. So, you know, stuff like that is really helpful for uh, other developers. Or you can also uh, update the admin and user documentation. So people who are setting up Nextcloud or using Nextcloud also don't have a hard time. So if you find any discrepancies, um, you know, you can go to the Nextcloud documentation repository and, you know, make a pull request or something like that, uh, or say that, you know, hey, this is not clear or something. That's a really, really valued contribution. 
uh, speaking of documenting things, there are also ways that you can um, make an app for Nextcloud. And that's like a kind of a new initiative. And there are tutorials for this that we worked on pretty recently. Um, so that's also something that you can look into developing an app uh, if that's something that you're interested in. Definitely. Um, and we recently started doing like also a video series about this on YouTube, um, where I sit in front of a camera and tr pretend to be a developer, but actually following like the tutorial as it's intended for non-technical people or people are just starting out. So that's me, where I quickly go through this tutorial and give you an idea how that process could look like. And uh, Daphne and a bunch of other people at the company have done a great job on creating these uh, tutorials. And I believe also with contributions from the community. We recently did one about how to set up your development environment and also how to, um, what was it? Uh, how to create like an interface only app and all of these things. And this is like a great idea uh, to, to watch this to, to have an idea of how to start out, how to, how to get started. And, um, yeah, we will link to those tutorials as well. Yeah, I think I, I just tested out one of the, you know, setting up your development environment for, uh, Windows and, uh, it worked really nicely for me. So I would, uh, I would personally like highly recommend that. So if you get a chance, um, you know, uh, please do, uh, check it out. Um, I don't know. And like one other sort of way that you can contribute. And I think, uh, this is like, we've talked a lot about contributing and I think this is one of my, uh, I don't know, sort of, like, I don't know, favorite, but like sort of not often thought about ways is like organizing local meetups. So yeah. I got a chance to go to my first FOSDEM like very recently and it was like an amazing experience. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was, it was super, super cool. And I got to meet like so many people. So um, organizing meetups or just meeting people who are enthusiastic about the same sort of stuff that you are, you know, is sort of spreading the word and it's a form of you know, contributing to, you are part of the community if you're, if you're doing that. So I think, um, you know, like I'm still, you know, I'm still like riding the FOSTEM high, but I would highly, highly recommend, you know, meeting other people who are as excited about something as you are. So, you know, like if you, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're up for it, you can always organize a little local, you know, Nextcloud meetup where you meet other people, talk to them, maybe, you know, like grab a drink or something, code a little bit, you know, whatever you want, the agenda is yours. And we, we do support those initiatives, actually. So if you plan on having like a booth at like a local tech conference or whatever the context might be, and uh, you want to have some resources there, as in like, I don't know, flyers, uh, we obviously get many requests for like uh, stickers for our next load. We have like the very often uh, tweeted and shared about on social media sticker with who owns your nudes and stuff like that. So yes. um, this is a great way to also inform other people that, hey, this product actually exists. So um, yeah, if uh, you will, I believe also find those uh, resources on nextcloud.com slash contribute and um, yeah please get in touch all right and that brings us to the end of this episode um, Nimisha it was a pleasure talking to you as always and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks in Berlin for company week oh I'm really excited about that as well and thank you so much for uh, having me it was it's it's it is always cool to talk about you know the nice things that we do at nextcloud so thank you absolutely thanks for coming on Nimisha have a great day you do. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Nextcloud podcast. Special thanks to Nimisha for sharing her insights with us today. If you have any feedback or ideas for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at podcast at nextcloud.com. We'll be back next month with another episode. Thank you for listening. Bye.